Hello, hello. I think I'm one minute early actually. Nice. Okay, we'll give everybody a couple of minutes to join. And then we'll get going. It's Thursday. Who loves Thursday nights? I really love Thursday nights. It's like looking forward to a long weekend because Friday doesn't really count. Thank you, thank you. I'm just giving everybody a minute or so to join. How are you guys doing tonight? Hey, the group had a lot of activity on, um, on Facebook, huh? The fast and everything that we've been doing. I just want to make sure we're all gathered here before I do the update. Hi, Carla. I want to, so yesterday, we, um, if you guys don't know us, we're a group that are doing challenges. We're doing manifestation challenges. We're challenging ourselves. Um, I have a product that's called the 60 day challenge in my bio. And that's all about getting your mind organized and manifesting together with the group. Yeah. So yesterday, um, for whoever wanted to participate from the Facebook group, we did a, a fast and we've been doing a fast. We've done it last Wednesday, this, this past Wednesday, and we're going to do it again on the last Wednesday of the summer. And the fast was vegan last week and yesterday it was juice only. So I, I'm going to tell you, because I've done a juice fast before for a couple of days, but it was many years ago. Yesterday it felt like, it felt like it wasn't easy, huh? It wasn't, all I had was like three juices and um, two coffees and one miso soup. And I'm telling you at some point, I was like, oh my God, I'm dizzy, but I made it. I made it. I know, um, I, I'm curious how many people did the fast with me. You know, in the Facebook group, I had about like 20, 30 people saying, yes, I'm going to do this. So I, I want to know like about how many people, did anybody on this live do the fast yesterday? The juice only fast, essence. I had a really great meditation after the fast. So we did the fast and then we did the meditation. Marta, how's your meditation for you? I mean, the meditation is just like 10 minutes. We do it for a specific amount of time for 468 seconds because 468 is our group number. Oh, it was a really good day for you for fasting, Valerie. That's, that's great to hear. Yeah, I felt totally different. I had a really good sleep. I had a wonderful dream, actually two wonderful dreams. Um, it was, it, it's something else. When your body doesn't go to bed and have to, has to digest, it's a totally different experience. But um, of course, we should be eating. I don't want to encourage not eating every day in order to have great dreams. Um, let's see. Carla says, I had completed a three-day fast. Tuesday was refeed day. And then Wednesday, the juice fast. Nice. Nice. Valerie was offered a free day at the opening of the of an aesthetic center. Yeah, yeah. I've had I've had two manifestations yesterday. They weren't major, but they were like whatever was on my mind coming, whatever's on my mind coming. Um Dora says I couldn't stop crying yesterday. I couldn't do the fast though. This is look, we uh were when we say when a group of people say I'm going to do something, right? Like a fast or something that's that's hard, right? There's always going to be people that are not going to be able to, to complete the challenge or the fast or what have you. And actually, somebody was honest. Yesterday, she said, um, I made it until 1 p.m. And then I had to eat something, but I'll still do the meditation with the group. Here's the thing. The ability to fast... Um, will tell you sort of where you are with your self-control and the control you can have right now at this point in time over your thoughts. And the control that you have over your thoughts is, is, is sort of obviously paramount in manifestation, right? Because you have to channel your thoughts, channel your energy and direct them towards a specific outcome that you want. So whether or not you can do the fast, that's okay. Just accept where you're at, right? But that tells you, you know, don't be frustrated when your manifestations aren't coming right away, right? You're just, you're just not, you just, sorry, my computer is, you're just not yet there. It doesn't mean you're not going to be there. It's just, it's so good to sort of understand 
But because when you see on the group, oh, I manifested this, I manifested this, and you're like, why haven't I manifested? And then, you know, you try to do something where you control your body, the actions of your body, and it's hard and it's difficult, yeah, right? So when you're trying to control your body and it's difficult, imagine how much harder it is to control your mind. And this is, this is just tells you, like, you just need practice. That's all you need. Practice, 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 practice. Try it again next week, okay? And next week we're doing water only. But if next week you want to try to do, you know, the juice or if you couldn't do the juice now, just try it again. Just don't give up. And, you know, as, as you gain ability to have control over your body, this is what happened to me yesterday. I was doing okay. And by two o'clock, I wasn't even hungry. And then um, my kid wanted a toasted bagel around four o'clock and as I was toasting that bagel and you guys know what they, that smells like right that smell of toast and bread and I was just like wow you know like I wasn't gonna touch it and I know I'm in full control of my body but the desire for it was so powerful right and but then I used that to sort of as input into if this desire of of the body is so powerful. Imagine like how much more the mind wanders. The mind has all sorts of desires all the time. Like, for example, it's, it's telling you don't do the work on yourself right now. Don't focus, don't let go, don't concentrate because, you know, the show is on and you need to think about the conversation that you're going to have tomorrow with your boss and you need to overthink about what your SP said or didn't say about you. You need to check your phone right now. You need to do this and you need to do that. You need to watch the Kardashians after the show, maybe after you'll meditate, maybe after call your mom, right? So the desire of the mind to do something else than what you're telling it to do is 10 times more than the desire I felt for, for that toasted bread. Right. So I understand you have to you have to sit with yourself and understand these things about yourself. Where's your how how much control do you have over the desires of the body, of the mind? How much are they in control and how much are you in control? All right. I think we all understand this. I'm looking forward to next Wednesday because we're going to do a full water fast. I've never done a water fast before. Um, you know, so no coffee, nothing. And the theme for next Wednesday will be projecting. So we've done a theme of releasing a theme yesterday of essence, absorbing the essence. And then on next Wednesday, we're going to do a water fast. I know I'm going to make it, but I know it's not going to be easy. It's better to set your mind such that it's not going to be easy because then you know when it's hard you're going to be like i knew this was going to be hard and i accept that it's going to be hard and i'm going to do it who's in with me for next wednesday who's in anybody anybody after that pep talk nobody <laughs> um i'm still gonna do it i'm still gonna do it somebody will do it with me aaron's in all right all right all right all right all right all right valerie's and everyone's in okay okay I'm glad there's a few people in water only. Okay. And you have to be honest. If you didn't make it, you didn't make it. It's okay. You know? All right. So we talked about um, the fast, um, the 60 day challenge. Um, everyone is on a different day because, you know, we all start at a different date. You can start the 60 day challenge anytime. Um, this week's manifestation is the Joker. Now, I've um, I've seen some posting on Facebook. When you get your manifestation, please post it on the Facebook group. And I've seen some um, manifestations that was a different interpretation of the Joker. It was like I know in the collective subconscious from the 90s, from the movie um, Batman, um, Heath Ledger had the role of the Joker. And I just want to pull it up because a few people put this image or image is very similar to, to this, like the Joker that Heath Ledger played. And, you know, in your mind, if you if you weren't like around when this movie was made and, you know, the, the trauma that his um, his suicide created, you know, and sort of like in the minds, everybody remembers that when he played the Joker, he committed suicide. Right. So um, but if you if you're not familiar with the story, you might not understand that this is the image of the Joker. Some people associate and a few people manifested it that way. Um, I got a couple of other Joker testimonials on my email, but um, I think we had a few on the Facebook group. And um, it's look, if you're new to the group, you're going to catch up with all the follow the previous sorry, the previous manifestation for some reason. I've noticed this about two months ago, but everybody who's new will manifest everything that all the weekly challenges in the group. I don't know what this is. 
So um, somebody says, I restarted yesterday with a fast. You mean you restarted the challenge? Um, wacky couple of days, revealing beliefs. Yes, yes. So this is, this is sort of what happens. So I want to read you guys um, a testimonial that I got. Let me just put it here on my other screen. Um, and what I like about getting these testimonials, you know, if somebody takes the time to write me an email like this, it's not like saying I manifested a car, I manifested, you know, if somebody t takes the time to um, tell me about manifesting um, an inner shift, this is extremely relevant, right? So this queen says, hello, Mona, I'm a little past day 20 of the 60 day challenge. And I want to check in with you. I'm enjoying these fasts that we are doing on Wednesday and I'm really enjoying controlling my body. I was meditating on myself and realized I feel like a new creature in just these past three weeks from starting the challenge. My view and relationship with the formless substance is so much more connected and real. I feel so heard, acknowledged, and doubtless. I'll admit manifesting the two doves was a challenge, but only because I decided it was a challenge. I managed to see two doves four times, but they were either cream color, light gray, or tan. The biggest change has been inside me and, let it go of, and letting go of outcomes. I stopped affirming for my special person or think of somebody specific anymore. I only show the universe pictures of what I want to feel. And I realize now that as long as I'm attracted to the person, this is what I want to feel. My affirmation goes something like this. A man that I'm deeply attracted to who adores me. What has been nice is that I'm starting to believe it and not needing a specific person. I have seen in just this past week, letting go of the SP and focusing on just pictures of what I want to feel and experience that I want to appropriate has actually drawn that specific person to me. He has shown more affection and has been more vulnerable and making obvious effort to please me. But who cares if it's him, right? As long as I'm attracted to a man that gives me the feeling I want to feel in 3D, that is what I want. I don't care about the how. This is the biggest change I wanted to share with you from the last 10 days is I have not been fully aware of this ways I tell the universe the how by meditating and keeping my mind completely blank on how and only writing the story I want in 3D. For the first 15 days, I was really not dreaming much. And when I did dream, they were senseless. But this past week, I've had three dreams that show me in the life I have been explaining to the universe. It's been really exciting. I wanted to let you know that you're appreciated. So the reason I take the time to read this is, look, there's a lot of people write to me. I'm on day three and I don't see a change. Am I doing something wrong? Queens, you've had 20, 30, 40 years of programming to be a certain way. Do not expect you know, instant, instant results. You will see if you go with the work and if you, as your, your limiting beliefs are revealed and you're experiencing shifts, inner shifts, everything will begin to change, right? And this is what I told you about ESP because the same thing happened to me. It's like when you don't think about them anymore, when you're just focusing on, I want this feeling with a man, that's when they go overboard to show you how much they love you and they show, show back up for you. But if you're not able to let go, if you make them into an object, into an obsession, into a desire, into something that you're aspiring to attain, then you're always lower than them and you will manifest more of that desire. All right. So that was that. I want to check in with you guys if you had um, any comments. Nora says, I've had a low, low week this week. So much shit coming out. Yeah, Nora, I know you're just starting um, this challenge this is completely normal, right? The first thing this challenge will reveal to you is your limiting beliefs. So they will come pounding, you know, pounding, especially like if you're a dreamer in dreams, you'll see all sorts of things that, that you're not going to like, but that you have to face. Always talk to the universe, talk back, right? Because the group energy is very powerful, right? It will push you forward. But the first thing you'll encounter is the bad things, the bad things you haven't been addressing. So, um, Let's see what we have here. Valerie stopped vaping. <laughs> nice. Let's look. Uh, I, I love this physical achievements, like achievements with, uh, you know, controlling our body and controlling that. That's amazing. I, I was never a smoker or a vapor, but, um, you know, I understand addictions are very, very difficult to overcome. I seem to be attracting people that are not aligning with my manifestations. I don't know what to do are you are you doing the challenge queen 
And um, when you're attracting them, is this people in general or is it relationship people? Uh, do you mind streaming my new song, Summer Vibes? You know what? When an artist asks me something like this, I do. I'll, I'll listen to it. And if I like it, I will uh, use it in a song, in a video. Okay, I wrote it down. Any tips to help end binge eating? Yeah, so first of all, you, you got to understand where that comes from, right? So binge eating, this is what happens with, with, with our body and our stress. Every time you are binge eating or, or you know you shouldn't be eating because you're not hungry, you have to check your stress levels, right? In the, we are, the majority of people is in a chronic low low level stress right chronic and low level stress that comes from like the day-to-day -day interaction with the world what happened is the way we have evolved we were never evolved to have the stress except in the case of famine okay when there wasn't enough food in the world that was the only time when a low grade chronic stressor was felt and because of that, all the other stressors for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years since humans came about, okay? They were all acute stresses, right? Like wars or fights or animal chasing you or, or other stresses that were acute. Acute, immediate, you dealt with it and you moved on. But the only low-grade long-term stressor was famine. And because you have this stressor in your life right now, and a lot of people do in the day in, day out, and that's a signal in your mind that it's famine and that you have to eat. So first of all, you got to understand physically what might be wrong with you is this binge eating comes from stress. Check your stress levels and instruct your body that it is not in famine. It is not. Now, you need to understand you're not your body. You are the person who owns the body and you can provide your body with instructions. You can instruct your body to be a certain weight. I have videos on manifesting a specific weight. I'm going to post one again tomorrow because I have like an update. And then what you have to do is instruct your body. Hey, we are not as you're falling asleep. I'm, we're not in you know, like I have plenty. There is plenty of food. I have plenty, right? So as you're telling your body, I will feed you and I'll take care of you and you'll never be not taken care of. And as you're doing that, um, you know, your body will understand the instruction that it's not that this low level, low grade stressor is not to not associate this with, with famine. Okay, so I want you to try that with a mindset if you're binge eating. Um... What's your opinion when someone says they put your SP in a love spell? They put your SP in a love spell or they put their own SP in a love spell? Love spells work depending who does it. They're not sustainable. So, um, you know, they don't work for everybody. They work for people who are talented in this work and they can achieve results. But the results are very, they're forced. They're forced manifestations of of bending someone's consciousness when you catch them at a low point when when temporarily you vibrate higher than them and you can instruct them and give them commands but you won't be able to to maintain that right this is why all love spells kind of fall apart and you know actually in all folklore and tradition if you look at the witches you know like they see them as this beautiful women and then all of a sudden that comes that moment when you know the prince sees the witch for who she really is and it's an awful moment so, you know, it's, um, it's kind of like that. So I don't really understand if you meant um, they placed your SP under a, a love spell or... Yeah. Thanks, um, thanks for the compliment, um, Iqbal, on my, uh, on my necklace. Okay, so um, what I do in these lives is I take up some questions that I get via emails or my Facebook group. And if I, if I feel they benefit the group, then, you know, I, I share them. So um, um, I'm going to read a few and then I'm going to take some questions from you guys. And let me know as I'm reading these things. Um, these are much shorter than the initial testimonial I read. Um, if I'm reading this thing, it, as I'm reading these things, if you have a question, just put it before I move on um, to, to, the, um, to the next one. 
So this queen says, I'm reaching out because I wanted to know if you had some advice for highly sensitive people. I'm doing my affirmations every day and working on my limiting beliefs, especially on relationships and money. I already see changes happening inside of me. I can feel I'm no longer the same person. I feel more confident and aligned. However, I find it hard not to react to my everyday life. I feel everything very strongly and my emotions are always ready to come out. I find it difficult to put distance between my new version and my everyday life, especially at work that brings me back to the old version of myself so if you have any advice i would love to hear it maybe in a live to find if you find it helpful okay so you know as as you're doing this work and you're shifting your inner identity right there will be that fight for for survival of your existing identity and this fight for survival your mind will create all sorts of reality scenarios that you will have to deal with that will prove to you that you're still still the old person. So understanding this is very important, right? Because if you expect those things to happen, it will be much easier to deal with them than if you don't expect it. If you expect, oh, I shifted internally and now I feel this little shift and everything I'm going to deal with will be just roses and love songs. It's not like that, right? The first thing that's going to happen is reality will show you the opposite. Reality will show you the opposite and will be like, do you really mean it that you're this new person? Let's see. There will be a test and maybe more than one test. And then if you pass those tests, what's going to happen is existing structures will begin to fall apart. Whether that's your job, whether you can no longer stand your boss, you can no longer stand your spouse who hasn't been performing for you for the last two, three years. You can no longer listen to, you know, your friends tell you about how all men suck. You you won't be able, like, something will happen that, that sort of will destroy a lot of the existing structures in your life. This is also normal. This is like step 1B, okay, from the first, the, the steps with the tests, right? So 1B will be, so this is, this understanding that this is normal is the first key to deal with it. And then when reality shows you something you don't want, you're like, ah, it's that thing. It's that thing that Mona talked about. I'm either in 1A or 1B. Which one is it? Is it like reality testing me to see if I'm going to give them a reaction? Or is it like existing structures are already falling apart? I'm not scared. I'm ready for it. I'm going to react differently. Or if you didn't react differently, okay, like let's say you're on the road and you didn't react differently, you swore the other person cutting you off or, you know, you did something similar. I'd just be like, okay, I, I caught myself. That's the old me. I intend that for the next time, I won't be doing that. You know, everything has two sides, right? So when somebody cuts you off and you almost get to an accident, you can see it as, oh my God, that idiot, you know, swear at him or, you know, but you can also see it as, I almost got into an accident, but I didn't. My God, this is such a great moment. I didn't get in an accident right now. It's amazing. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, you have to make conscious decisions around your reactions. If you catch yourself failing, you're going to say it's the old me failed. It's trying to gain back, you know, battleground, but I'm not going to let her. I'm not going to, I'm, it's me. It's me. It's conscious effort, conscious effort, right? Any tips on manifesting weight loss? We just talked about the weight. Um, I don't want you to use the weight, weight, the words weight loss. Weight loss tells your body something wrong with it. I want you to just set your weight to whatever weight you want to be. And I have videos proving that I've done this. I'll post another update tomorrow. I'm still the same weight since uh, May 2022, which is the weight that um, I just decided to set to a decimal weight. Several other people in this group have achieved that, not to the decimal point, but have achieved getting to a weight and being able to maintain it, right? Um, all right, so the second message I wanna read, I am currently trying to figure out where to live, she says. I am originally from Long Island, New York, but I live in Massachusetts. I have an apartment in Massachusetts that I love and feel very safe in, but I am missing community there and I feel very lonely. In New York, all of my family is here and my friends. It's very easy for me to manifest when I'm in New York because I feel supported. I've been toying with the idea of moving back to New York. 
One of my friends has a gorgeous home in New York. Ask her if she needs a roommate. She said no, but two days later, she texted me telling me her cousin was moving out and she'll be looking for a roommate. It was an instant manifestation. The rent is a little outside my comfort zone, but I can manage it. And I don't really want to spend in other areas of my life. And she says, I am torn on what to do with my living situation. And I need to get clear on this in order to start this challenge, right? Do you have any insight? So the first thing I'm going to say, once you set your intention to do a group challenge with us, just setting that intention for some reason has helped people already manifest. And we, we've talked about several such stories, right? But in, in this case, it seems like you got it. You're waiting for everything to settle to start. You shouldn't wait to start. It's normal for something to come forward as, as you're diving into our group intention. Our group intention is always for growth and pushing life forward to the highest benefit of all. So to your highest benefit and to all of our highest benefit. So the moment you decided to be part of this group, life's already showing you direction, right? The fact that she said no, but then later changed her, her mind. This is a clear sign. Guys, when somebody says no, and then changes their mind to be for you. That's your sign, especially if you're doing this challenge. Um, that's your sign that that's, that's the route you're supposed to take. And, and do not hesitate, right? Because part of manifestation work is taking the inspired action. This is, I don't know if this is not inspired action, what is? You asked her if she has a room, she said no. Two days later, you know, something happened and she's able to give you that room. Go for it. Okay. There's no deadline to join the challenge. You start whenever. Um, please join also the Facebook group for the duration of uh, the challenge, which is for two months. Then you can cancel it because we share our manifestations there. Okay. I hope I was clear on that. When you have something like this happen that is kind of out of the ordinary, you have to go for it new opportunity coming, somebody reaches out to you, just to see what that, that's all about. An email gets to you. Somebody got an email by accident that revealed to them something that another person was going to do. And then they took that action instead and it paid off, like it paid off financially. So watch for anything that's sort of outside of your day-to-day -day norm, because those are prompters. The other thing um, I want to talk about, somebody's asking... Is it bad? Is it bad to want to manifest a relationship or a man that supports you financially? I feel like I find myself dreaming of men that can take care of me. I'm very independent and I have a job that pays my bills, but I always yearn for someone to take my financial worries off my shoulder. So I'm going to answer this from two perspectives. Okay. One is from like a life coaching perspective. And another thing is from a manifestation perspective. I believe in uh, traditional relationships in not in the 1950 traditional relationship, but in a relationship where the man protects, provides, prioritizes, And this is what I talked about in my, uh, with mostly men for some reason in my relationship account, it ended up being like that. And it turns out that the in, on my relationship account where I was mostly followed by men for some reason, a lot of them kind of resonated with what I said and reached out to me and say, that's what I want to do. Like a lot, a lot of them. Okay. And, but I can't do it in the context where, you know, she still wants to party with her friends or she still wants like, there's a mixed signal for women in today's society, whether or not you want to be independent. And for some reason, women think that if they, um, if they want to feel like someone's taking care of them, that somehow um, a mistake on their part, a failure on their part, like she's saying, is it bad to want to manifest uh, a man who wants to take care of me? When in fact, it's simply a natural impulse, right? It's a natural impulse. Whether or not society can sustain for only men to be the full-time provider, that's, that's a different question. And I don't know what the answer it is. But this desire is completely normal. And if more women were very, very honest in, in the work that they're doing with themselves, I'm not talking even with the world. I'm talking when you write down, when you ask for a husband, when you ask for a relationship, to ask it in, in a sense of exactly what it is you want, right? How is your day-to-day? -day? How he provides for you? How he, ideally, your, your spouse.
Men would provide a minimum of 80% of necessary life expenses, okay? And what I mean by that is food and shelter and all, all the bills being paid would be like a minimum for, for you to feel supported, protected, provided, and prioritized. And I am telling you, I have talked to a lot of men on my other account that were prepared to do exactly this for, um, for as long as their needs got met in the relationship, okay? So I don't know if, you know, I'm saying it's, it's for every woman out there, but I don't want the women who feel this way to feel like there's something wrong with them, that's all. That's all. And I don't want women who don't think this way to put down this other women. I, everybody has a different desire in their heart. And if your desire is to achieve to be the CEO of, you know, or a second in charge after Elon Musk and on Tesla and you're a woman, great. That's amazing. You know, but don't look down on, I don't know who's shaming this women who just wants to be, who just want to be wives who just want to be taken care of, who have proven that they can take care of themselves. And now they're on this other side where they feel there's something wrong with their desire, something wrong with their femininity. I don't want that for women. I want you guys to be honest. What happens from a manifestation perspective is if you're not honest and you're not completely honest, there will be that duality inside of you that will not permit you to manifest anything or it will always be a mismatch. Okay? It will, it will be a mismatch. If that's what you want and you're not saying it, ask yourself why you're not saying it. You can definitely say it on my account. Carla, what do you mean you feel like there's something wrong with you in the respect of in, in based on what I'm saying or what can I do to manifest my husband to prioritize me over, over his friends? Um, Queen, um, this is it's a complicated question, right? Because it depends how you got how you got to where you're at. But changing your perspective of where you stand in his life, you changing your perspective and where you place him in your life is key. Go go through my content. It's definitely more difficult to manifest someone changing once you're in that relationship. But I have a queen who did it. Um, I don't know if you're on this live, but um, she basically, I read her testimonial before. And initially she said, I started doing your work and I can't stand my husband to provide, like we're on a 50-50 arrangement and I can't stand that anymore. And I say, it's normal for you not to be able to stand that anymore. And it's normal for you, Queen, to not be able to stand the fact that he's prioritizing his friends, especially if you're doing this work because you're shifting and the new you doesn't match the you that wasn't prioritized, that wasn't provided for. So anyways, this Queen that I'm mentioning in my story, she gave me a testimony. I told her, don't worry, existing structures will crumble because, you know, like most of the relationships that with people start this work kind of break up because they're not the right relationships, right? But she somehow gave me a testimonial two months later saying my husband is a completely different man. He He's like a full-time provider now. We worked it out. He's completely changed his mind. So, you know, I read that testimonial maybe two or three lives ago. I, I want you guys to know it is possible, but it's definitely um, more, more, um, it's going to be more work and more communication. The idea is you really have to be honest about where your needs are because a lot of a lot of men a lot of husbands if you tolerated something that you never liked right for a long time it's it's not a reasonable expectation for you to expect that he would all of a sudden know that right we get what we accept and the truth is many many people accept things that they don't want to accept but they accept them along the way and it's all coming back to the honesty. You can't go and manifest from a point where you're not being truthful about what you really want. Look, guys, always say what you want. What's the worst that can happen? The thing can fall apart. Yeah, but it's already not working, right? Like, what's the worst that can happen? You're not going to have your needs met because you don't have a man. But now you have a man and your needs are not being met. So you really like... You, you don't have any opportunities to have those needs met, right? Because you're not meeting other men. It's sort of like that. How can I attract masculine provider men if I have strong masculine energy, trying to lean into my feminine energy? Well, at least I'm glad like a lot of women are admitting 
their, um, where they're at and what they really want. The strong masculine energy is developed in women um, based on the fact that um, a lot of women grow up without fathers in today's society. Um, even the ones who grow up with fathers, maybe they see the mom now taking a more, more of a leadership role in the home. And then they sort of, they're expected to take this leadership role at work as well, right? So when they come home, they're still in that mode. For some reason, they never let go of that mode. So what happens is like, you got like, energy wise, it's like two men living together, right? Like she's the leader, he's the leader. They're not, they're not happy. Like who's leading, she's leading. It's, it's very, this is why I relate. That's, that's a whole other conversation. But as long as you know that you're in your strong masculine, you can always control that. It's like the fasting that we did, right? It's, it's more of a problem for women who don't know why it's not working, who don't know they're in their strong masculine. If, if you know you're in your strong masculine, then controlling those masculine tendencies, but you'll know which ones they are because they, they feel uncomfortable, right? They feel, I don't, I don't want to think about where like we're gonna have a dinner date right the restaurant selection like I don't want somebody asking me um so where do you want to go so what do you want to do sorry like where do you want to go you know what I mean that's that's casting me in a masculine role and I'm recognizing it and I'm addressing it if if it happens it doesn't happen with with my fiance but if it were to happen I would be like no no, but see the immediate reaction of the majority of women on, on this live or listening would be like, yeah, so I was thinking like maybe we could go Italian or maybe you could, no, no, because like right now you're, you're starting on the wrong foot, right? All right, I want to get to um, to more and I have just a couple of more. Okay, this is from our Facebook group. So she says, I want to tell you, I've been single for more or less five years by my own decision. And recently I decided I wanted to have a husband. I began to think how I would like to feel and so on. And recently a man asked me out. He came to where I live. I, we went to eat and he has many things that I would like in a man. Although he's not my type, I did feel seen, valued and desired. I know that he's not the one I want, but I feel the universe understood how I want to feel. So soon the one that is for me will arrive. And I went like I was I was in the same situation I shared on on the live that I was single for um for a few years before I decided to to date again I had been married before so um the best thing to do when you're single is to define your value and exactly what it is that you want based on what we discussed before don't make a list with a man I don't believe in that because it failed for me but based on how you want to feel based on what this man provides in your life what is his value at and it could it could have to do with what we talked before about him being a provider about him prioritizing you over your friends but this is the best time to do that work and do not accept anything less when you go back on the dating market than exactly what it is you want so this queen you know maybe she had some dating interactions where she didn't feel valued right because all of a sudden she says i went back again now after i've done the work and i feel valued and wanted and whatever else she said it, it is very important that you define these things are very significant for me they're very significant i i think they're significant for a hundred percent of the women you know but maybe some women have specific interests you know maybe some you know, there's somebody out there who just I, I don't know she just is looking to marry a millionaire and doesn't really matter if he's going to have affairs with other people as long as she lives in that 10 million dollar mansion she doesn't care maybe i don't know right so i to allow for other other opinions which is fine um but i think the majority of women unless you're seen heard valued you feel desired especially you're not gonna, going to be happy not going to be happy at all. All right. Um, somebody asked how many hours per day does it need to do the challenge? So the challenge is, um, it's reliant on two things. One is our group energy. Two is organizing your mind into four specific areas of your life, relationship, money, career, and body. And you have entries to do in a spreadsheet. You have to record your dreams and you have to record the happenings in your 3D life that happened to you that you can associate with the things that you wrote 
But more importantly, we have pre-populated affirmations that you have to recite for yourself and for the group because you have to contribute back the energy to the group in order to get launching energy for your own desires. And I really believed in the believe in this and it's it's helped a lot of people. So um, how many hours in addition to that, you will need to do scripting, journaling, whatever spirit tells you, whatever your intuition tells you. Right, because you need to contemplate on these concepts. There's parts of the challenge that you need to print, put on walls, always have it in your mind. It's based on specific premises. So all the instructions are outlined. If you if you go to my bio, like even before you buy it, you can just read the instructions and see if you can keep up with something. But it doesn't take hours. It just takes setting your mind. You know. Um, The same queen that I read um, the testimonial that she's been single for five years, she also put something else that I found very relevant. She said, before I used to see a lot of reviews of the 90 day fiance program. And last week I realized that I was getting full of ideas about couples and how, for example, people who are in love from other countries are doing badly and so on. So I stopped following all those channels. Although I must admit that a part of me wants to continue watching the chaos, but no, I want a nice relationship. And that didn't help me. Guys, please don't call me. I don't take calls during my live. I just declined something. Okay, so this is extremely relevant, right? Because what did I tell you? The world will, will try to pull you in a different direction than you getting your desires. And they are craving your attention. They're craving your energy. They want your etheric energy. They want your mind focused on gossip, on what doesn't work, on celebrities, on you know, um, other people getting humiliated and making fun of and putting like all your subconscious mind is absorbing when you're watching the shows is like, my God, you know, like if I get in a relationship, this could happen to me. I could be this person who's so embarrassing. I could be, this could, you know, I could meet a person like this or, or what have you, you can't watch those programs. You can't watch anything that goes against what you want. So if you've decided you're manifesting a husband Okay, you cannot watch shows that show how great it is being single. You're going to conflict yourself in, in your mind. You have to, I, I've done a video about this and I told you the most important thing in manifestation is knowing what you want. You have to sit with yourself in, in the challenge for the person who asked me. In the challenge, you also have to set your four goals in this in these areas of your life. And you can obviously you can repeat this challenge after 60 days or keep going or change your goals because these goals will get accomplished. So you'll need to replace them with different goals, right? So one of my goals was, you know, I, I was single and I said, I'm going to be engaged in within a year to the man of my dreams. And, you know, I, I am now. It, it took like 10 months. But, um, you know, that's what I was manifesting. That was my goal. That's where my mind was staying. All the men who date me want to marry me. All do you, do you know what I mean? Like your mind is, it, I know exactly that that's what would make me happy. I'm not going to take anything else. I'm not going to take somebody who says, well, let me fly you around the world, but just know that, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not divorced yet, or, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not at the point where I can offer commitment because my children are four and five years old or, or something like this. Right. So I, I just, want you to understand that once you set your mind on what you want, you cannot accept anything different. Because the moment you do, you kind of like everything in your mind will be in a state of conflict. And and there's damage that happens along the way when you accept things you don't want. There's damage in the heart. The heart is where we manifest from is the feelings. And there there's damage in in there's that duality. Duality creates conflict in your brain. That's just, that's the simple explanation of it. So the best, the best thing against that is always be honest, never accept anything that is different from exactly what it is you want. All right. I have a queen who, while well, I talked to her on a one-on-one -on -one level and she was in this relationship for three years and the relationship was nowhere near where she deserved and she wanted. And, you know, she kept saying, he's not communicating with me. I said, I don't, I don't think that's, that's really the issue, right? It's like after three years, you know, like he's, maybe he's like more quiet, but like, let's say, let's play out the scenario. If he only texted you once during the day, but you know, it was about, um, Hey honey, what can I pick up for dinner so we can eat together? Cause we're now living together and being together. Would that be okay? And she thought about it and she's like, yeah, 
okay, so I said, um, it's not really communication you want, or it's not the fact that he doesn't text you enough. It's, it's not that. It's the fact that after three, four years, you're still in uh, the texting mode, right? So you really have to be honest about what you want. Be honest with yourself. Don't say you want more communication. Maybe, you know, the universe will send you a man that will text you every five minutes, but it will still be a non-committal man. Don't say you want communication if you want marriage. Don't say, you know, you want marriage if all you want, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know what the opposite of that would be. I don't want to say it. So um, I have to stop telling myself I'm good alone after watching miserable people in relationships around me. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know, and I, like I said, I, I was also single by choice for a few years. And yeah, there are times when I contemplate it. It's not that bad being being on my own, right? And then I continue to manifest that. Of course, I wasn't doing anything to, to change that. But um, until you change your mind and you say, I want this. The beauty, the beauty of manifestation and how this works is this. The past doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if you've told yourself you're good alone for, I don't know, 30 years. Because you can just decide now that right now you're no longer good being alone. And going forward over the next 12 months, 18 months, you're going to be in a fully committed relationship with the person of your dreams. Other people's results do not matter. Your own past or current results do not matter. Do you understand that? None of this matters. You can completely distance and disassociate yourself from your past and from your past results. They are simply a reflection of where your mind was then. Now you changed your mind. You must attract a new result. You must. It, it has no choice but to come that way. So that's where we're at with manifesting love. Is there any more questions around DSP and love? Because this is sort of what I had from, um, from the emails. And I answer more questions on the Facebook group if you guys are part of the challenge and part of the Facebook group. Um, by the way, like I said, you can cancel any time. But if when you cancel in the group, I will remove you from the group. OK, because um, not because I care about the four dollars. But what happens is when somebody no longer finds value in something, they're no longer contributing value. So my group, I don't care if it's 20 people, if it's 200 people, it's 2,000 people, it can be like two people, but those people have to contribute. They have to contribute. They have to look over other people's posts. They have to think about it, they have to contemplate, they have to contribute their energy. So I just want you guys to know I'm taking this group energy thing extremely seriously, like extremely seriously. And you should also, you should come in from a place of, respecting everyone in the group and understanding that everyone in the group, the group has rules on what you can post. Understanding everybody in the group is at a different point in their manifestation path. Where they're at in their manifestation has nothing to do with where you're at, right? It has nothing to do when you see their manifestation there to serve as inspiration, but it doesn't mean you won't manifest better and it doesn't mean you're going to manifest the same. It just means it's possible and more is possible for you. Okay, you guys, do you have um, any other specific questions? Let's see. How do we set a clear goal about being financially free? Being financially free is very loose as, as a concept. What does it mean being financially free? I want you to define that as being fine. Like, do you think... Elon Musk is financially free. He's not financially free. He has a lot of money, but he's not free at all. You know, so financially set and being free are many times very different concepts. Okay, a Buddhist monk is very free. He's free to do after he does his a few duties around the monastery. Is free to do anything he wants in his mind. Well, maybe that's not a good example because he can't really travel too much. But somebody who has very little money can be can live a very free life. 
So I want you to, what is financially free? Is it achieving a certain income every year? How is your life different when you earn a million dollars a year? How many hours do you need to put in? How many, how much time you need to spend with the office? How much time you need to spend with your clients? Is it winning the lottery? How are you going to handle that lottery win? What are your money worries around winning the lottery? Who is, is money going to destroy your family? If you give your sister a million, your brother a million, are they going to handle it the same way? Like all of these beliefs need to be analyzed when you say I want to be financially free. What does that mean? <laughs> you said you should manifest a partner based on feelings. Can you add traits like religion? Um, I think you can have a very, um, any boundary you have in your dating life is okay, Alexis. Okay. Like your boundary in your dating life can be, I only date a Muslim man. Okay. And you only date Muslim men to begin with. Now, whether that Muslim man is going to fit in with whatever feeling you're trying to get from a man is different. Like for me, because only because I'm tall, I don't only date somebody who's taller than me. Like I'm five nine. I don't date. I never dated anyone under six feet. Not because, you know, like, but just because I don't feel in my feminine, I don't feel comfortable with anyone shorter than me. Right. So that's not even, that's just a social boundary. Right. And religion is also a social boundary before you're even exploring a man if you have a definitive social boundary stick with it because every time I try to go against this height thing like for me I was I was uncomfortable and it was just a waste of his time and maybe feelings and my time and feelings so it's absolutely okay I don't want you queens to think that some social boundary because society tells you oh you shouldn't worry about things like religion or height you only you know your boundary okay and any boundary is okay it's, it's okay, right? Like this is your life. It's your body. It's your time. It's your energy. You give it to whoever meets this boundary. You don't have to explain this boundary. Like in my life, I don't, I, I wouldn't be with somebody like with a man who has women friends. Now, is that the case for every woman? No, a lot of women are okay with their husbands or boyfriends having women friends, talking to other women, going for lunch with their friend of 20 years. I'm, I'm not okay with that. So I would, I don't date men who have women friends, right? It's a first question I ask, who's in your life? Who are your friends? And I don't, I don't try, it doesn't matter if the society tells me I'm insecure or what have you, because it's my life. Get it? It's okay for me to want whatever I want. I don't have to make myself uncomfortable to please society. If you want to date only Muslim men, you're only going to date Muslim men. That is okay. Let's see. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, but isn't that boundary something you've been conditioned with? No, it's something that you um, feel comfortable with or not. This queen definitely said, can I add something like religion, which means it's important to her. Marrying someone of the same religion as race, it's all forced down your throat by family. Okay, so there you need to decide maybe these things are not important to you, but what's important to you is pleasing your family. Then you have to make a decision about what is more important. For some people, pleasing their family is massively important. You know, I, I once worked with this um, guy in corporate. He was a Korean guy. He was born here in Canada. And he had five sisters. I'm not kidding you. Five sisters. They all married white guys. And I was, uh, I was telling him, oh, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine who was like his age. And he said, let me see her picture. I showed him the picture. And I was like, oh, yeah, she's, I can't do that to my parents. Like my parents will literally die after all my five sisters married white men. Like for me not to marry a Korean girl. It's not, it's not, I can't do it. I won't even date a non-Korean girl. Right. So you, do you see what I mean? I'm not saying his view is incorrect. It's not for him making his mom and dad happy is very important and that's okay mm. alexa said massively important to me my parents would not talk to me if i married outside my religion yeah that's okay that's okay why can't you manifest someone of your own religion like why can't i manifest someone who's six feet or or taller of course i can of course i did you know, it's just, think of it as it's not even a big deal. It's just a little social boundary. You got to meet it in order to consider somebody. I'm a sister of five too. <laughs> Can you imagine this guy having like five older sisters? Oh my God. All right, guys, this is the last live of the week. 
I want to see a few more jokers. And joker is the manifestation of the week before the end of the week. Somebody on this live will send me a testimonial. At least one person on this live. Look in my eyes. At least one person on this live will send me a testimonial that something incredible happened to them between now and the end of the week. All right. Let's put our hands together for the 369. I am a winner. If you guys don't know me, I tap three times, six times, nine times, and we put our phone away and we sort of bait in that energy of winning. Okay, you have to do it with me though if you stay. If not, have a great rest of the week and we'll see you Monday at 12. I am a winner. 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 I am a winner.